All right. So, anyways, uh, building a money making pipeline is is what I want to talk about. You know, going from I'm simply a transactional agent to actually building a business that has built in pipelines. And what I mean by transactional versus just a a strategic pipeline is we sell a home, uh, hand people the keys, give them a gift or whatever, and we do some follow-up. But we just kind of hope that they are going to remember us when it's time to transact again and or think of us when their family and friends are thinking about doing real estate as opposed to, hey, this is my business. When I'm having conversations with people, we're not only talking about our upcoming transaction, but we're also talking about future transactions um, instead of always having to chase. So I wanted to kind of highlight what I, I, I think of a transactional agent as is is we, we typically sell real estate for personal financial gain. I know we're in this to help people, but we're in this at the end of the day. We sell a house and we receive a commission and we receive some personal financial gain. gain. We're really focused a lot on just real estate sales strategies, which is nothing wrong with it. No. We need to learn how to sell real estate. Um, but when we're focused on, on real estate sales strategies, again, we're focused on the singular home, the, the, the here and now home. And it's very linear, linear. You know, the sole purpose is to sell the client. So as a transactional agent, this is what I see all the time, Todd. When the deal is done, really, so is, so is the job. And we do the deal, and then we look for the next deal. Then we look for the next deal. And then what happens as time passes, all of those past deals, uh, there's so much opportunity there, but we're not focused on it, and we don't realize it. And a lot of what we do as a transactional agent, which we should, is we provide a lot of financial strategies before the close. Okay, We are closing on home number A. Our emphasis is financial strategies on simply just home number A. You know, <clears throat> this is exactly correct because in, in our marketplace, we we tend to create relationships around somebody giving me a lead for, a, you know, somebody to buy a home that they're going to live in, first-time home buyer or something along those lines. All of, my, all of the marketing or the advertising that's done is about, you know, trying to f- – about buying a home for your primary residence, um, you know, nothing is really done post-close. It's like we wait until that particular client needs to buy another house and and think about it again in the future, and that could be five, seven, ten years in today's trade cycle. So, you know, if and, and I totally get it. If that's what you think – that's why you're not staying in communication with people because it's like, why do I want to put all my energy into these people? It's better for me to put my energy into r- internet leads and, and incubate them for a year than it is to incubate the person I just sold for seven years. But you're missing mm-hmm. the whole yeah. point of the relationship. Um, you know, I mean, if you want a salad tonight. Nope. If you, you know, I know, Mike. Yeah, with a burger. Okay. Um, if yeah, if if you the salad wanted, on the burger, yeah, give me some lettuce, go. tomato, and onion. Yeah. So, or the or the burger on the salad, right? So, in this particular case, you'd go to the store and you're going to pay dearly for a head of lettuce. You're going to pay dearly for tomatoes, dearly for onion, dearly for cucumbers, dearly for you know peppers. You know whatever you're putting in your in your salad. Where if you took the time to go and plant seeds for those particular things, you will end up having so much, so many embolments that your 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 cup will runneth over so to speak that's the way you have to look at real estate as though the consumer and your real estate business is the is the farming and cultivating and planting of, of those veggies and you know you know whatever happens that you you plant one thing in your garden you end up with so much of it you start giving it to your neighbors and everybody yep. else and because there's just too much well that can happen in your business too if you're focusing on it correctly well you know and Nick as you know this is just the transactional agent. This is how we're trained. This exactly. is this is exactly. just what, what we say. learn in in real estate school and 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 on almost just about every class that we attend. Correct. It, it transactional agents are those new licensees or the the agents that have not been able to speak to a coach, speak to a team leader, talk to someone who's been in the industry for a while. Be, and even I would say a while, six months to a year. You learn really quickly that if you become transactional and that's that's kind of the silo in which you do your business. Your business is not. It's a roller coaster because it is lead based. It's 
it's internet lead based, which is not a consistent way of building a business. You are dependent on how good or bad, how many leads are coming through in that, that market time. Yeah, and then we talk about that, you know, the goal for every agent is to build a referral based business. You want your clients referring business to you, but you also in that you want your clients to buy again from you. And 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 I consider that a referral as well. So building a pipeline attitude you know, when you're building a pipeline attitude as opposed to the transactional agent, now you're selling kind of wealth management for the client's financial gain. We're, we're, we're brainstorming and we're strategizing your future here. And so now instead of me focused on the here and now and the commission now, I'm really focused on the client's financial gain. And when you're focused on the financial client's gain, there's multiple transactions down the road because you're helping them build wealth. And it's and it's more non-linear. Uh, we're providing clients all options to achieving real estate go goals. Uh, looking at every option on the table, not just the option that we're focused on right now. Right. Uh, Non-transactional, you know, the job continues indefinitely. And so when we're helping people build wealth in real estate and we're, and we're helping people really achieve whatever their financial goals are, the, the the job, even though agency, and I have things to talk to them about. Now I know what I'm following up because because we're building a we're building a long term plan plan, and so instead of providing financial strategies before the close, now we're providing financial strategies before, during, and after the close. It just it just keeps going. So imagine that every individual agent, your client is evaluating to hire you and to bring you into their world. And you're trying to convince them to pack up their kids, pack up their families, pack up their life and move to another house across town versus the kind of person who wants to strategize with them and your team changes, the people that you associate with. So yes, you still have your, your home inspector and you still have your lender and you still have your you know, home warranty people. But in addition to that, you have a 1031 tax exchange expert. You have a person who, who finances investment properties. Uh, you have uh, an attorney that you deal with uh, that, or a CPA that can explain uh, tax benefits to people, uh, to your clients, to these people. And when you have these conversations, all of a sudden, you re you move yourself out of being just another realtor in the consumer's mindset. What you do is you, and that's really, I look at this as building a pipeline attitude. I'm not saying look in the mirror and build a pipeline attitude, which you have to do, and that's what that's about. I'm saying put your client in a situation where they look at you as a pipeline person. That's a good point. I like that a lot, actually. It's so uh, the book that, that comes to mind here is Simon Sinek's The Infinite Game. You come into this thinking long term. So long term thinking means potentially short term losses, but you get long term wins. And that's what the focus here. That's what the goal here is. And I don't know what's, what number three says, Mikey, but so far you haven't said past client. So big kudos to you because we've talked about that on this podcast a few times. We're the only industry that calls the people that transact client. with us one time a past client. No, no, they're a client now. Yeah. So financial strategies before, during is important and every agent should be able to do that. It's the after the close. That is what makes the money down the road. All right. So then with this, it, 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 it takes now systems. It, it's because now we're being very intentional. Uh, we're being very intentional. If you're going to be very intentional and you're wanting clients to transact with you again. And, and, and that's the, I, I know that it's the goal of every agent. You want every sure. client to transact with you again, but now you can put in systems and you can put in strategies to ensure that they are going to transact with you again. And so building a pipeline after the close system, we've talked about it so many times, you know, for us, we built our 23 touch after the close system where we're ensured that uh, once we hand somebody the keys over the next 12 months, we are going to touch them 23 times. Some of it happens automatically through our website, and, and some of it happens with us actually picking up the phone and doing something or stopping over. Um, but now it's it's this is just where all the money's left on the table, right. is, is this the lack of follow-up. So uh, now we're providing valuable information after the close, because now we're talking about long-term. Now we have something different to talk about. And I know for, for me, what I love about my business is um, my clients typically, we've got them trained. They call before they do anything because 
not because they feel any sense of loyalty to me as their agent, but because they want to know my thoughts and they want to know what, what my feelings are about the market or what, what do you think about this, Mike? And so now I, I'm, I, I'm that advisor to them, and that's really the ultimate goal. And I love that because they just they just they they trust us as the experts, as the source of the information. So before they would just go do anything, they want to get our thoughts, and now we know that they're thinking about transacting again. Well, you want to you want to them to think of you when they think of anything to do with real estate. And yet, at the same time, you know, you're pu- you want to be considered uh, the ultimate pr- expert and professional in this field. If somebody needed, they're going to go to a dentist if they need dental work. They're going to go to a doctor if they if they they're going to go to their CPA. In fact, actually, let me just stop for a second and tell you, right now is a fantastic time to have conversations with consumers about investing because some some people have just been told you need a write off between now and the end of the year. And so there might be in their future, and this is maybe a little late to that game, but there may be a, you know something right in the future where they need to do business within the next three weeks and close on it with cash in the next three weeks. You're going to change the caliber of the clientele you're talking to. I'm not saying you end up not with a first-time home buyer, but I'm saying you're going to end up with people who have the mentality, and this was what I said in number two, uh, of wanting to invest in real estate. They just don't know how. And if you can help bridge that gap and lead them to that, you're going to have a whole new set of conversations with people that the average agent isn't having. Well, I would, I would just say you use two words there. You use trained and then you use trust. They're calling you because they trust you. You've proven that you are a trustworthy person because when they call, you give them good, sound advice. You make them hear, feel heard and you spend the time that they need to gain that trust. All right. So with that, uh, again, our event tomorrow is really what this is focused on. And I, I want to encourage everybody, if you're if you're signed up for the West USA Choice thing, attend that. Um, you know, you're <laughs> it's, it's, yes, pre- you. it's pretty important. Yeah. Uh, wink, wink. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but um, if you're not and you're really wanting to, to dive into what how we build a pipeline business as opposed to a transactional business, again, we're doing this special event uh, tomorrow from 10 to 12 at the Fidelity National Office in Scottsdale. Have you ever thought of doing this on Zoom? Uh, yeah, but, you know, I've thought about it. But not okay, well, not not seriously. Just saying, reach, baby, reach. <laughs> well, you know, my feeling is is never mind. Um, so that's tomorrow. All right. So 